Hello everyone, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. And I went to the uh, card show uh, and I, uh, I picked up one thing, but the best thing about the card show, of course, is meeting up with friends. I was able to meet up with a couple of my good buddies there. Well, actually a few of my good buddies, but spent some good time with a couple of the guys. And, uh, you know, they don't have uh, YouTube channels, but they follow me, they're friends of mine, and really I consider them, you know, hobby friends and good friends, even though they don't have uh, YouTube channels, they have great collections. So one day maybe they'll get uh, they'll get some. One of them is a, uh, you know, a boxing, like, collects boxing and baseball. And the other one also uh, collects baseball, mainly twins and Kirby Puckett and stuff, but it was great to see them there. So what I wanted to show today is what I, uh, what I picked up and um, uh, what, I, what I picked up is something that is very uh, rare and it's, uh, I'll just go ahead and just put it right up there. It's called a CDV and it's a Carta de Vista, that's the name of it. It's basically a, uh, um, a photograph on a, uh, on a cardboard stock. And this is from the 1880s. I don't know the exact date, but this is John L. Sullivan. And he is in a penny sleever. So I recommend you guys get the penny sleever. I'm putting a lot of my stuff in penny sleevers. I do have something I want to show you. It's not in a penny sleever, but I want to compare it so you can see the size of this thing. But what I want to talk about really is John L. Sullivan. I mean, John L. Sullivan, if you don't know about boxing, you know, I'm going to read a little bit about him here from this uh, article in the Boxing Magazine. And it says, you might say John L. Sullivan is to boxing what George Washington is to the presidency. He was the first and historical lineage of personalities and title holders that would shape the face of the sport. He was considered by most boxing historians to be the first to hold what is called the greatest title in sports, the heavyweight championship of the world. So they made the heavyweight champion belt after him. And why? Because this guy was undefeated until his last fight. Let's take a really good look at this uh, CDV of uh, John L. Sullivan. And uh, I'll pull this out of here. What, the reason I brought this out is to kind of give you an idea of the size of the CDV so you can kind of feel for what it looks like. So I want to be careful with this because it's from the 1880s, but I do want to take it out. But you can see it's very similar in size to the 52s. It's, a, it's wide, it's pretty much the same width, just a little bit taller than the 52 tops. So it's, it's a card, they do grade it. I, I haven't even looked at the uh, pop report on this, but it, you know it's gonna be very, very, very low. This is an 1880s card. And uh, for him, I mean, really he, he only lost one fight. John O'Sullivan lost one fight in his career and it was the last one. And they say that he fought over 600 uh, times uh, his, uh, Official wins were over 200 wins, where they get only one loss, and he fought with, with the bare knuckles. Now this card, of course, has got a crease right down the middle there. You can see it, but it really, the, card, the crease is on the photograph, which you can kind of see it's stuck onto the board, onto the paper or the cardboard, which is how they were made, the carta de vista. CDV, so you, you know, you can kind of tell that it is kind of, you see that corner lifting a little bit? How it's kind of, kind of stuck on there, but it's an actual, it's like a photo graph. The back is blank back. You can see the crease there, and somebody wrote on this. So this is not gonna grade any more than a one, you know, because of the, the crease and the, and the writing. But uh, you can see how old it is. Got a little bit of mold on the back there, but. It's from 1880s. Don't know the exact date. Would have to do a little bit more research on that. Uh, but uh, go ahead and give you a good look and uh, share this because, uh, as you know, I do have uh, a, a boxing collection. Not a big boxing collection, but 
pr pretty good boxing collections. I got, I got a lot of big uh, stars. I do have the John L. Sullivan in the Goodwin Champions, uh, one of the highest, second highest graded in seven. And um, the thing with, with him is that before, I'm give you, so you can take a good look at him there, on an actual photo of him there. During his, uh, almost his prime, I guess, is during the 1880s, even though he, he started a little bit be, right before that. Um, but um, anyway, before the, uh, the glove era, you know, uh, he was called the Boston Strong Boy. And I'll read here, it says, uh, bludgeoning numerous opponents into unconsciousness in what historians have estimated to be hundreds of illegal bare knuckle fights. Uh, Sullivan lived his life as many champions throughout the years, full throttle, women, booze, brawls, and all that. But you know, the funny thing is, once he retired later in his years, he married and became a, a preacher and and talked bad about drinking and all that stuff and really lived a, a, a good life after that. He was born in 1858 and uh, he was 5'10 and a half and weighed a little over 200 pounds uh, in his prime. Uh, and uh, you know, he was just, by all historical accounts, he possessed brute strength as well as surprising hand speed. And uh, Joe Shonsky, a heavyweight contender, uh, said after he fought him, his right arm came across like a flash of lightning with a jerk. If he misses, he's so quick you can't get your head out of range before it's back ready for another shot at your jaw. Make no mistake about it, John L. Sullivan enjoyed fighting. Uh, you don't just walk into a saloon or bar and announce, I can lick any son of a bitch in the house if you don't enjoy fighting. So what he would do is he would challenge anybody and uh, he would go on the road and challenge people. And uh, he went at, on, a, uh, on a tour fighting in, you know, just to make money. He challenged everybody, anybody, a thousand dollars if they could knock him out or he could beat him. Challenged anybody to come in. Now a thousand dollars back in the days was more than most people made in, in a year. So during that uh, round, or I guess the exhibition round, uh, bouts, he fought 154 times and he knocked out every single one of them. No one beat him. Um, Sullivan claimed the title, the heavyweight title, in 1882 against Patty Ryan after stopping him in nine rounds. And afterwards, Patty Ryan said, when Sullivan hit me, I thought a telegraph pole had been shoved against my endways. Don't know what that meant, but <laughs> that, that didn't sound very, very pleasant there. But uh, overall, man, it was just, uh, this guy was just untouchable, untouchable. And uh, I mean, he would be pretty much everyone. The only one that he couldn't knock out was uh, Charlie Mitchell. And uh, it says here, like most fighters, John L. had an opponent whose style gave him lots, all kinds of problems. That opponent was Englishman Charlie Mitchell. Mitchell was a runner when it came to Sullivan. Sullivan may have fast hands, but his feet weren't nearly as fast as Mitchell's. So Mitchell would, you know, it says Mitchell would sidestep him, would move around, and run around, kind of like a Muhammad Ali style. So uh, he, uh, Sullivan challenged Mitchell uh, to a three round bout in Madison Square Garden. Sullivan started fast and dropped Mitchell twice in the opening round. Then Mitchell actually hit him and knocked him down for the first time in his career. He was knocked out with a, with a left hook. But John L. Sullivan came back, and of course he, he beat, and, and, and the police stopped the fight uh, because was, he just, uh, you know, this guy would, would literally almost kill people, you know? I mean, that's how bad, that's how hard this guy hit. And um, he, um, let's see if I can read you some of the, the, the battles that he had here. Um, uh, let's see here. Here's Don L. Sullivan and Jake Kilrain. The Battle of the Undefeated Champions took place July 8th in 1889 in Mississippi. And uh, with the help of William Muldoon, a wrestler and physical training guru of the day, Sullivan, who actually had, uh, came back, he, you know, he kind of retired and he came back because nobody would, would beat him. And Sullivan came back and he got back in shape. And the fight would be the last fight he ever fought under the London Ring rules. And the uh, prize was $10,000 winner take all. The training of Muldoon 
uh, had transformed a tired, bloated 240-pound Sullivan into a chiseled 215-pounder. So let's take a good look at him here. This is the uh, this is John L. Sullivan. And this is the uh, CDV, like an actual photo. You see, it's kind of cracked the photo there because it's from 1880. So you're talking a 150-year-old almost photo there. But look at that guy. Who'd go up against this guy? John L. Sullivan, the latest portrait of the champion pugilists of the world. Now this card, they say it may be from Great Britain because the way, in my opinion, the way they spell the pugilists with a K, but um, you know, I have to do more research and, and find out, you know, and again, the back is just a, just a blank back. It's like a cardboard blank back. And you can see it's old, it's a little chipping on the corners there. A little bit, thing. but you know, from 1880s, what do you expect? But uh, it's just a great portrait of, of him. So anyway, um, you know, Sullivan went back and ended up, uh, you know, pretty much winning every, pretty much every fight that he, that he fought there. And uh, this particular, uh, fight. Uh, it says the the fight which last was the last fight, and it says the battle which took place within the within the scorching summer heat affect, affected Kill Rain more than it did Sullivan. After two hours and seventy five rounds, Kill Rain Kill Rain's corner told told by a doctor that Kill Rain's life would be in jeopardy if he endured any more punishment. Kill Rain was exhausted and barely conscious. And then, uh, so they basically threw in the towel and uh, he ended up uh, losing. And uh, so, you know, he, he basically, you know, went all the way through and, and lost really his last uh, fight. And that was to uh, Corbett. And that was in the 21st round and, and what was called Corbett's new scientific bo boxing technique that enabled him to dodge John L's rushing attacks and wear him down with jabs. A combination of rights and left put Sullivan down for the 10 count and Sullivan's undefeated run had finally come to the end. So that's how he got beat at the end and it was basically because he was already old by then. Uh, Corbett was 26 and uh, he was in his uh, 30s, late 30s and he was kind of out of shape and it was his last fight and he came back for the money. But overall, you know, John L. Sullivan, the greatest fighter, heavyweight boxer, really, of all time. And they made the, the belt for him. And uh, the belt that they made was uh, a gold belt, all made of gold, with diamonds that around it that spelled his name. And uh, you could see uh, that on the Goodwin Champion card that I had, I don't have it with me right now, there is a uh, picture of the belt that's shown on the floor there, so you can see it. But anyway, this is it. John L. Sullivan, CDV, from 1880s. And give you one last look at my pickup from the card show, the Palm Beach card show. John L. Sullivan, portrait. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Really, really appreciate you guys. So I uh, just want to give you an idea what that looks like. It's it's really like the size of a card, and it's a photograph of the heavyweight champion of the world, the greatest heavyweight champion of the world, John L. Sullivan, the, and the last bare knuckle champion. If you talk about the UFC, this guy really was a UFC guy. I mean, this guy came out and would take on anybody at any time and uh, he's just an incredible fighter uh, and, a, and a nice piece to add to my John L. Sullivan and boxing collection. So thanks for watching guys, really appreciate you, uh, uh, you know, giving a like, giving a comment and just kind of uh, supporting me, I, I truly, truly appreciate that. So what do you think of this John L. Sullivan CDV card? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome, awesome day. It's Orlando from my collector's dream.